is Nori Contractor. Nori. Good morning, everyone. I'd like to please remind everyone to mind your mute buttons as a courtesy to our speaker. Today, it's my honor to present Charlotte Bell, author, photographer, volunteer, and philanthropist, and someone we consider a good friend here in San Miguel de Allende. Often considered the most important season in Mexican culture, March 28th began a week-long period known as Semana Santa. Charlotte will not bring religious agenda to her discussion, but rather will teach us more about the rituals, the cultural practices, the role of suffering and penitence, and the altars and other visual wonders of this period. Since 1994, Charlotte Bell has lived part of the year in Mexico, which she calls a candy store for photographers. She's the author uh -huh. of Tears from the Crown of Thorns, a book replete with photographs that she has gained access to by meeting with revered citizens who shared stories going back hundreds of years, a book I highly recommend. It is my pleasure now to leave you in the good company of Charlotte Bell. Charlotte? Thank you so much, Nori. Um, I'm very honored to be here. I have such high regard for Rotary in general and all you do, and certainly for Patronato Pro Ninos. Um, this is, um, I, I'm glad you mentioned that this is not a religious um, lecture. Um, I am not a particularly religious person, but I'm, I have great respect for the Mexicans and all traditions that have to do with with um, with religion, and this book that um, I sort of stumbled into actually making it because as a professional photographer, um, I've been going around taking pictures of San Miguel, and and of course when we were here for Semana Santa the first time, I was you know it's like Semana Santa is just filled with amazing photographs that you can take. And I took all these photographs and then became very curious. And that's what led to this, the creation of this book. And so I am going to give you, um, do a, uh, a PowerPoint. So let me share my screen. And this is a first for me. All right. Uh, this is, of course, the, the um, cover of the book, but what I'd like to start with is, of course, San Miguel. Here we are in this very strange time <laughs> that we're living in, and I'll refer to that a little bit further on in terms of suffering, which is the theme of Semana Santa, by the way. Um, you know, people come here from all over the world, and because this town is full of traditions and um, and observances, which is what Semana Santa is. It's actually the observance of the last days in the life of Jesus. So what I'm going to be doing is sort of opening some historic doors to um, invite you in to have, um, so that even though this year we're not going to be able to um, participate and, and, ob and observe these um, events, um, we're, we're going to do it um, vicariously through photographs, but next year and in the years in the future, I, what I, my thoughts are is to, so that you can, you know, there's a saying in Spanish, el que no sabe es como el que no ve. If you don't know what you're looking at, you can't, see, you don't really see it. And so my hope is that through these photographs and through my little lecture here, that when you do see these um, images in the future, that it will give you a better um, understanding of exactly what you're seeing so that you can appreciate them more. Uh, this is the first photograph. This is what actually started this whole process. Um, this is a photograph I took back, I don't know, maybe 15 years ago or so. It could have been taken 100 years ago. I mean, it looks old. And it, it encouraged me um, as a photographer, of course, you're always looking for interesting things to take pictures of. And what this photograph said to me is, where do they store these angels? And because these angels are not out 
during the year. They're in a storeroom. So I went on a search for the angel storeroom, and that's what sort of began the whole process. It led me to um, this man who actually made these angels in 1990s. Um, he was he's San Miguel Saint Maker. Unfortunately, he had he died about five years ago, but of course this book was written far be, beyond that. And um, I first of all I went to look for the angel storeroom, found the storeroom, found the man who. Uh, has the key to the storeroom, who in turn led me to Hinaro Almanza, who is San Miguel Saint Maker. And he is the man that was um, commissioned to make these sta angel statues back in the 90s because the city fathers wanted to make the um, procession of Santo and Tierro much more elaborate and much more beautiful, and that's when they hired him to do it. So I went and interviewed him, and in this interview, um, he, he was a fascinating guy. He was full of stories about old San Miguel, and of course, stories about Samana Santa. And he gave me, I, I went back several times, he gave me all this information, and then he said, what are you gonna do with this? <laughs> this stuff that you're, this information that you're, that I'm giving you, and I kind of went, well, I mean, I was just curious. And I thought, well, maybe I'll make a book. And he looked at me and he said, you need to make this book. And I feel that it was uh, his, his, um, um, his, his finger pointing at me that made me create it. And so the next few years I went back and fi fi uh, finished taking all the photographs I needed and kind of coming to a focus on exactly what I was going to um, put forward. So one of the things that is interesting that he taught me is that, uh, oh, and by the way, he was, he was taught by his father, Donato, who was taught in the 1800s by Estanislao Hernandez. There was a school for saint makers here in San Miguel on Tenereas, and his father would go by the, the school and he was fascinated. Their, their family were Raboso makers. But he had this thing that he wanted to become a, sant uh, a santero, a saint maker. And uh, his father, he looked at him and they uh, talked about it. And he was apprenticed to Estanislao Hernandez to become a saint maker. He was a famous one, and Donato was. And he taught all his boys. Uh, the whole family is saint makers, as are Hinaro's children are all saint makers and restorers of the statuary. But what he was taught is that he is not just to make a saint that is, you know, how you go into a church and it's like there's these sort of blank faces. But his thing was you need to make photographs, you need to make statues that make people not observers, but participants so that they really feel what's happening here. And you can certainly see it in his pictures, in his uh, pictures of his statues. Um, and these, of course, these are the angels that he made for Samana Santa, and they carry the objects of the crucifixion here. This particular saint or angel is carrying uh, the, 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 um, the chalice. They are not named. These are, in fact, this tradition of these angels goes back into Italy, into the 13, 1400s, and they are not Saint um, Gabriel or anything else. These are unnamed angels that were set by God to help Mary with her pain, and that's why we see them here. And there, and obviously, he does a fabulous job. Another person that's important that really fits within the whole history of Semana Santa is um, Felipe Neri de Alfaro. He is the builder of um, Atotonilco, and he is also, um, he came to San Miguel, he was born in uh, 1709, died in 1776, and he, he was um, a man, he was a visionary, um, he was a great believer in um, 
teaching people through imagery. Of course, we're talking about a time when most of the uh, people in, in in the world were illiterate, so they would learn from reenactments, which are frequently processions, and also the the um, uh, Alta Tenilco is um, it's. Of course, here we see the outside, but the inside is all painted with, as were many churches in the, the day, many of San Miguel's churches have been repainted, but they were painted with, the uh, Totonilco is all about the passion, about the last days in the life of Jesus. And here we see Judas giving Jesus the um, the kiss to let the soldiers um know that this is the this is the man that you're to uh, to crucify. Now, I'm going to give you my little suffering um, <laughs> lecture here because this is such an essential part of Semana Santa. And it certainly is something that I don't need to tell anybody about at this point. I think we've all experienced suffering in this extraordinary time. You know, I think of it, who in 20, 2020 of, of last year would have thought that we would be here today dealing with this worldwide pandemic. We have all suffered through these years. And when people talk about um, Samana Santa, it is the observance of the Jesus crucifixion. Um, many people comment on the images that they see in Mexico, which is like this one which is this, you know, bloodied suffering. Whereas in the United States, we tend to sort of bypass this part. We have, you know, you'll go into many churches, all you'll see is a cross. We don't have these images that, that make people really think about what happened to this man. Um, so you could say that um, we come here to Mexico, many people will judge people wondering why they're, showing these images of agony, and it's a good question. Um, it is does lead us to why some of the differences in our cultures. Um, so, but there's some lessons to be learned here. You know, when this pandemic began, we had no idea what ride we were in for. And I remember just thinking, um, well, just, oh, if, you know, if this lasts just for a couple of months, no one is gonna learn anything. Well, it's lasted a long time, and I think we are certainly learning something, and we're learning about suffering. I know I've personally been on a roller coaster of emotions. We've had to force with people being on respirators, people dying, police brutality, blacks, with uh, uh, Floyd George as an example, being persecuted, people being underpaid for their hard work, economic depression, a narcissistic president making crazy decisions at every turn, doctors and nurses dying and exhausted, a capital stormed by violent protesters. If we aren't suffering, this is suffering we are experiencing. However, <laughs> there is a ray of sunshine in all this because people, how are they reacting? How we, people are coming together, they're helping one another, they're smiling at strangers, we're realizing at a core level how much we really need to each other. So back to Samana Santa. <laughs> so I'm looking at these, these images of the suffering and the whipped Christ and thinking about the frailty of, um, of uh, the human being and how we need to open our hearts to each other. And this is one of the pictures that has been uh, one of my very favorite pictures because it speaks to the Mexican people. These people are looking at a statue walking by them, but they're allowing themselves to feel. They're allowing themselves to experience that pain that Hanaro was talking about, that his t statues are, are, and by experiencing it, that they're able to open their hearts to compassion, which is the message of Jesus. Um, like I say, I don't want to be, this is not about a religion. This is about a philosophy and about all of us learning how we need to open our hearts to one another. So that's my little lecture. 
Now we'll go on to the images of the um, of the what we're not being able to say to say this year. Now, whether you heard that explosions that this would have been uh, not this. Let's see, where are we here? It would have been on sa last night, Saturday night, is when is the Entrada de Señor de la Columna. This is the uh, procession that was created by Padre Alfaro. Um, it starts in Atotonilco at midnight. They bring down three statues from the altars. This is Señor de Columna. You can see the w beautiful face of this man in his deep reverence and belief and faith in these what these statues represent. It's not that they're honoring statues, it's they're honoring what they represent. And they have cleared out Atautanilco, um, the church, and people are singing and they're starting to prepare the statues for their, their trip into San Miguel. Here we see them, they bring them down from the altars and then they cover them with silk scarves that have been donated by, um, the townspeople in Atotonilco, and afterwards then they get their scarf back and they'll put it over a loved one that maybe has died that year. They're very, very special. And then they're covered with a canvas and they're sitting and waiting and outside, and I cannot imagine next year when things where I'm sure we're going to be having Samana Santa processions and observances next year. It is going to be a wild event. There, before this, there are thousands of people literally waiting for these statues to come out, out to begin the procession. Um, you can see they've got the banner of uh, Senor, and they come out from the church. They give a, um, a, a mass, and at midnight, they start walking um, the statues into San Miguel. In the meantime, they're preparing um, insurgentes, the street, with um, beautiful flowers and uh, sawdust designs. And of course, everywhere you're going to see and feel the, see the, the uh, streets are covered with chamomile because the idea is to, again, is to make people have a multi-sensory experience. You smell it, you see it, you feel it that this is about Semana Santa is not just um, to watch something, it's to have a real experience. And this beautiful music, the band is playing at the top of the hill of Insurgentes, it's called Christus Factus Est. You're gonna hear it all through Semana Santa. It was written um, about over a hundred years ago in San Miguel for this, for Semana Santa in San Miguel. And they have, um, they prepared um, coffee and hot chocolate and so on and chamomile tea for all the people that have walked all night to come in and have something to, to drink. And just at dawn, they let off the fireworks to let you know that they're coming into San Miguel, they're arriving, and they come in with the um, statues and they take the robes off at the top of Insurgentes You'll see the many layers of scarves that are on the uh, statue of uh, Senor de la Columna. Beautiful banners are across the street, and they whisk them down the, the hill. Um, at the end of the procession, there's, of course, Mary and San Juan. And again, people are taking this very seriously. This is um, the beginning of an of, uh, experience to remember each other and the compassion that we need to have for each other. They're still singing. They've sung all the way from Atotonilco all the way to San Miguel. And they end up at the Church of San Juan de Dios. And you see them here. They have another service here as well. Then last week, um, last Friday is Viernes del Dolores. This is my very, very favorite um, experience. Um, they have, um, this is because it's in people's homes. Here they have, it's just a simple little doorway that's opened 
and they've created these beautiful altars inside with their family treasures. They all have the symbols of Samana Santa, the bitter orange for Mary's tears, the new grass for new life, of course, the nails and the hammer, etc., and the crown of thorns. But there'll be things in, in a window, um, maybe in front of someone's stairway. They've created little altars. Um, again, another window with um, I was here with my mother at one time. They they loved older. I was bringing her along, and she was holding onto my arm. We were walking up and down San Miguel streets, and they brought me back into the through the kitchen, and they were having dinner, and through the the courtyard back, and they wanted to show my mother and I their their beautiful little Maria statue. It was so important to them. This is in a another kind of a famous altar that it created, they've taken all their furniture out of their front room and created this amazing altar. It's different every year. And this is actually at Hanaro Almanza's. Uh, again, every year it's a different design. And this is, as an artist, this is what I love about it, is it's individual people making altars in their simple little homes, like this simple home. They've got this little altar there and in the living room you can see there's Maria and the fireplace off to the side and here in a very simple simple um, behind one of the doors uh, you know how people live in these um, little rooms and they've created this beautiful altar for their um, their family and then other families that have more money they've got this is, these are almost three-quarter size statues with a beautiful painted backdrop. This is on Barranca. Um, and this is um, actually in um, Senor Perez, who is the man who organizes the big cer uh, cer uh, procession on Good Friday. Um, but he has, they have a chapel next to their house on Aldama, and you can actually go by there now. I would imagine they have this is a private chapel, but it has a little a window that you can look into it. And they have these statues that the family have had for years. And each year they create a different design using the same statues. And you can see here over the, on the side where they have um, the entrance to this chapel. And they allow you to come in, of course, during regular times. But I am imagining that... Um, they have uh, created, they've taken the, the uh, statuary down and they've created an altar for you to look into um, their home. And then of course in the, um, this is in the Allende Museum, you can see the beautiful face of Mary with tears. Then of course last Sunday um, was the Domingo de Ramos or Palm Sunday with um, beautiful um, palms that have been created. They're selling them, um, or they, at least they will in the future, and they have in the past, in front of the churches. And people are making them as they're uh, being sold. And actually, people, uh, there's a craft of palm making of objects from Michoacan. So we get people that come in from the state of Michoacan that are selling their beautiful um, palms that are, some of them are made into like um, little crosses that we can see down here and others that just wave in the, um, and here we have little, this was made by a child. He was selling it and he put a little, st little stamps of saints on there. Um, and then there are two processions generally for uh, um, Domingo de Ramos. The first one is on San Francisco Church, uh, starts in the morning about 10 o'clock. And this one is a reenactment of the actual Jesus coming into um, on Palm Sunday. And this is Mary Magdalene. Of course, there's the um, people from the, alt the altar boys, etc. And Jesus is portrayed by a human being. Um, the last time I saw this a couple years ago, same guy, he's grown older, like just like me, <laughs> but he's still playing this part. Um, and he comes down San Francisco um, in procession um, to 
as Jesus coming into Jerusalem. And then uh, again, about 11 o'clock or 12, they have another procession starting from Ora's Park. And this time Jesus is portrayed by a statue. Again, the altar boys begin the um, statue. The priest comes in and he blesses everyone with holy water before they start the procession. They go down Sollano. It's decorated beautifully. And um, you can see the beautiful decorations. And here we have Jesus is being held in a, a palaquin as a statue this time. Lots of um, and people bringing flowers and, of course, the palms. And um, you can't quite see it. Of course, the jacarandas are blooming. And behind them um, are the either the Apaches or the Aztecs. <laughs> this is San Miguel. You know, religion has its variations in this country. It's like the old is blended with the new. And here we have uh, Jesus is coming into the parochia where they have a mass. And in the meantime, on the outside, you can see that from one year they had the Apaches um, that were dancing in front and behind the, um, the procession, and the other year they had the Aztec dancers that were dancing. Then Wednesday, which would be tomorrow, is the procession of Golpe. And this one starts actually from the Oratorio Church and then goes around the Hardeen and comes forward um, with, again, the Jesus. is It's to uh, celebrate or to um, look at the procession of Jesus carrying the cross. Lots of women and bringing their precious, again, um, pictures and statues and so on from inside their homes, all dressed in black. And some women are bringing the objects from the crucifixion. Um, they have, in fact, you can see these now. Um, there are little altars that are that are made put into the sides of buildings, and those are meant for this particular procession. Um, so they decorate them for, and so you can see in the background behind um, Jesus there that that altar is. And, and this is on done neighborhood by neighborhood, and the procession will follow this around. You can see that they're decorating it. They decorate it the day of. Now, whether they're going to do this or not, I'm not sure. Um, it will, I guess, depend on, you know, it, the procession, I do not believe, will happen. But the altars might be decorated. It's, um, it's one of those we'll have to see. Um, as a photographer, of course, I love taking, there's all these children, these little gorgeous girls that are dressed in there as angels that are in this procession. Um, and I like this one in particular. It tells you why ch Mexican children are so well behaved. They have grandmothers that keep them in line. Um, and of course, this beautiful picture of this woman in front of the oratorio. Then Thursday night is the night of the altars. Again, I do not believe people will be out. And the idea is to visit seven churches. Well, the, I, I'm sure people will not be doing that, but I would think that the churches might still decorate their altars and have them available. I don't know this as a fact, but um, people come in. The, the idea, again, is to go through seven churches to bring you blessings for the rest of the year. So you can see people are lined up and they're selling um, bread and um, uh, and chamomile to put down. And so here's a little church up in uh, off north of Baraka where um, they have their deal. And um, if you go through the Oratorio Church and then the um, the side, uh, La Salud, and then you go through the garden. They have uh, Judas, which is hanging from a tree, and he goes up and down. They have him on a little little uh, thing, little mechanism, and the last church. Now, we're finally to Good Friday. The first one, which was begun by Padre Alfaro, Santo Encuentro, it's the meeting of Jesus and Mary. But it begins, and by the way, this is a description of it. These two processions on Good Friday 
are um, people are invited to participate in. And this is a description of it. Um, this is organized by Ruben Santa uh, Viasana. And it begins with the reading of the judgment of Jesus in front of the, or, um, the uh, San Rafael Church. I'm going to move along quickly here because I know we're almost done, but I know I've got a few more minutes left, I believe. Um, this is a, they had built the stage and they whisk the stage away and begin the procession, which comes through the interior of the church. Um, I love this one because it, notice how they've used the, a, a broom for the uh, helmet on the decoration of this soldier, Roman soldier. Band is playing Christus Factus Est. The children are singing the song again and it's very much of a funeral dirge little angels this is the plaque of padre alfaro which will be um he would be coming through after this um penitents are wearing hair shirts they have whips around their um waists and they're carrying um skulls this this and it, by the way this is also called passing of the sacerdote this is the priest, um, and he would have been Padre Alfaro in the days of the past, and he would have been whipping himself literally. Now they have just red marks on his back. Um, the penitents, again, carrying heavy crosses, children in training for this. It's an honor to be part of this. Um, and this uh, a sort of an amazing picture of, um, this is Essie Omo. He is not coming out this year, I was told. He is resting as he does every year between Christmas and Easter or Semana Santa. He rests in the altar behind the altar in the, in the um, parochia church. And then they bring him out to be in this procession. And then from this time forward, he goes from church to church, um, bringing on the rain. He's also known as the rain god, another um, combination of both the Spanish religion and the old religions from back in the day. And these are the other statues that are through there. Um, take, people take this very seriously passing the um, chamomile. And the reason this is called the Encuentro is because it's the encounter of Jesus and Mary. They bring Mary out in front of the, uh, the parochia and Jesus, notice his head is now up. There is a string on the bottom of the palaquin that's carrying him that he comes, he looks up at his mother three times across from the parochia, um, and then, of course, goes to his death for, um, and he, and then at the end, on five or six o'clock, is Santo Entierro, which is the um, funeral press, uh, pr um, procession of Jesus. Again, it's one that has a, a, um, a invitation. This was the 289th procession, uh, and this was at least 10 years ago. So uh, these are ancient processions that have been going on for years. They've marked the procession trail with the, um, the um, purple banners. And this is Luis Perez, that, um, whose, procession, whose altar we saw earlier. He is the man that let me into the angel storeroom. He was the organizer of this procession for 30 plus years had the little little hardware store there in front of the parochia, which is now, I believe, a, a regular, regular store, but um, humble guy that organized this whole procession. Of course, the Roman soldiers are in the beginning. They play a very steady bum, 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 bum drum because this is a funeral procession followed by the little, girl, the little girls, um, and they are carrying the old angels that um, are from the 1800s. 
but they have not gotten rid of them. They just, they're in the storeroom and then behind, next to them, of course, I loved her in her, not real happy in her little dress there. Um, the little girls, you can't help but take pictures of them. They're so charming. And then the stop and go light, uh, this is before, before, um, be, before the time of uh, cell phones and so on, that uh, they used this stop and go lights to light, so that they could have, they were interspersed without, throughout the procession. Purple meant stop, and then they'd turn it to the light side when it was time to go again so they could organize the people. The women, of course, all dressed in black, and they are the ones that carry the statues of the angels. And everyone, talk about penitence. Can you imagine walking on these high, <laughs> these cobblestone streets with these shoes on? <laughs> There's different ways to create it, but they take it very seriously. And the children are also told, this is a serious procession. You are not to giggle, to laugh, to talk. Beautiful statues. And then finally we have the men that are coming out with, the, of course, the chamomile is placed in front of it. And 36 men are carrying this statue of Jesus in his tomb. These are the most important um, men in the church, and in, but they're, they're laymen. They're not priests. The priests will come afterwards. This is all these organizations, all these processions, all these things are organized by the lay people of San Miguel. And this statue was done in 1969 by Salvador Vargas Sandoval. Children again singing Mary at the end. Carried by the women. These are also statues that were made by um, Renaro Almanza. This is the, the last of them. And sometimes it will end the very end is Saturday, which is the procession of Soledad. I'll do this very quickly. I know we're running out of time, but it is beautiful. And again, it's out of the Oratorio Church, which is the major church for all of the events around Semana Santa. And then, of course, Easter Sunday all the i'm sure we will see these in the churches the resurrected jesus but we will probably not see them blow up judas which is always a it's like a comic relief after all the solemnity that we've had and uh, frequently these uh some of the statues are the heads are from um political figures uh, I believe that's Salinas that's in the middle there. So this ends it. We come out of the out of the church with the flying angels. Um, again, this is from my book, Tears from the Crown of Thorns. Um, if you're in interested, you can get it on Amazon or Biblioteca. It has lots more information. It is bilingual. It's in both Spanish and English. And um, thank you for your attention and this ability to have a little piece of Samana Santa, um, even though we're not going to be able to, to see it in person this year. Thank you. Well, thank you, Charlotte. Um, I did place on the, uh, on the chat uh, the opportunity for people to either ask questions or make comments. I think we're also blown away, not only with your presentation itself, but the pictures are just so absolutely marvelous. Um, I take screenshots during the meetings so that uh, one day we can look back and see what we did during COVID period. And I think I have your entire presentation now on screenshots, they're all beautiful. So folks, if, if anyone has questions or comments, uh, we still have a few minutes left. Uh, we're happy to, we, we still have Charlotte's attention, so it would be wonderful to get her perspective. As my professor says, don't you all beat each other up in order to get the attention. <laughs>
Okay, let's see, I have something here on chat. It was a very thought provoking presentation. It was captivating. Wonderful, thank you, Charlotte. And that was from Chris McCaskill, thank you. Okay, Skip, I'll leave it in your good and capable hands. Okay, Nori, thank you. And uh, Charlotte, we really appreciate your presentation. And to show our appreciation and to commemorate your uh, visit with us this morning, the Rotary Club of San Miguel de Allende will make a donation of 10 polio immunizations in your honor, the Rotary's End Polio Now campaign. So this uh, suitable for framing certificate will be emailed to you with, of course, our thanks. So thanks again, Charlotte. Appreciate it. All right. Well, folks, if you like what we do, we'd love to have you join us. Ron, you want to roll it? The biggest gift we are given is the power to touch a life, to change, to make a difference in the circle of life. Rotarians are ending polio worldwide, fighting COVID, and working on impactful projects like dry composting toilets, water cisterns, our beekeeping project in the compo, and much more on the way. Projects that are changing lives. And at the same time, we are increasing our membership. If we can reach out with our hands, heart, and soul, the magic will begin to happen. As the wheel begins to roll, let's turn the wheel together so all humanity thrives. We have the power to serve, to change lives, and that should excite you. We're seeking people who want to make a difference, to serve, change lives, and people who love challenges. We are the Midday Rotary Club of San Miguel de Allende. Yes, we are. Tom Schneider, you got a few words for us before we uh, wrap it up? Well, you know, I think you've kind of said it all, and uh, it's really nice that if you want to send any of your friends to uh, our website, uh, rotarysmamidday.org, uh, you can uh, get a, a link to the, uh, to the presentation here, and uh, in, the middle of that, uh, in the middle of that page that you land on, there's a donate button, and we encourage everybody to uh, go by there, even if you only want to... Uh, donate $20, $200, uh, what have you, you can support these projects. You can actually select which project you want to, or you can just have it go to the bidding. But, um, you know, we really uh, appreciate everybody coming and uh, please ask people to go to our website and go there yourself after this meeting and, uh, you know, click the donate button. We, we haven't slowed down at all in what we're doing, have we, Skip? No, we have not. Thank you. Hey, Tom, that's a wrap, ladies and gentlemen. Next week is our club business meeting. We want to thank all of you for attending. And this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>